Just kidding, this thing's awesome. I'm here with the founders of Outrider USA, Jesse and Tommy, who are going to tell us about their invention, the Horizon. So what is this thing? So behind us is the Outrider Horizon, and this is a three-wheeled mountain bike that uh, allows you to blend both human power with pedaling with uh, the industry's best electric assists. Um, and then the, the add-on to that is that we've made a couple of really innovative adaptations that you can adapt to this um, that allow people with physical disabilities to get out and thrash the trail just the same as somebody who's able-bodied. How did you guys come up with this idea? Um, well, we have, we've had kind of, there's two sub-ideas within this. One is uh, the Alpha and one is the Horizon. And the Alpha came first and that was, the Alpha came out of uh, our college years around 2009 when we were all the three co-founders, Jesse, Daniel and I, uh, were in school and wanted to find a way to combine the exercise of a bike with the speed and practicality of a motorcycle or a car. Um, so the Alpha uh, was the, the result of that. It basically took both things that we love about those two vehicles and, and married them in one thing. Uh, and I used that to ride, uh, use it instead of my car basically for the remainder of college. And then it, it kind of organically turned into a business when we graduated and we That's moved awesome. to Fletcher. And, and then the next phase of it was the Horizon that happened in 2013. That's really And that cool. wasn't our idea. The Horizon is the off-road version, the Alpha is the on-road. And the Horizon came about from a guy named Chris Wenner, a quadriplegic adventurer that lives out in Tucson, Arizona. He contacted us and said, I'm dreaming of this vehicle. Can you guys partner with me to make it happen so I can get out and ride and go wherever I want to go as um, someone that has a more uh, involved physical disability can sometimes make it tough to get out on the trails. Now is there anything like this out there? Um, so there's in the world of adaptive vehicles if we're just looking at the horizon which is the horizon has been a lot of our focus lately. The horizon again is our off-road model and we have two different iterations of it. We have uh, one that's more of a standardized setup for able-bodied riders and then we have uh, a small group of adaptive features that allow it to be uh, ridden for people with different types of physical disabilities. And in the world of adaptive uh, bicycles, there are hand cycles for both on-road and off-road use. Um, but they, the disadvantage with that is it can be challenging, especially in off-road applications for the upper body, which can on average put out about 50% of the power as compared with the lower body. It can be challenging for a hand cyclist to be able to keep up um, with uh, able-bodied mountain bikers. And that makes it tougher to get the groups out together. Um, so that already exists, the hand cycles do. Then there's downhill um, adaptive mountain bikes that have, most have no pedals or four-wheeled versions, and they will bomb downhill. And they do great downhill, but they can't go uphill unless you have some kind of assist. Um, but the Horizon takes the things that folks love about a hand cycle, the exercise aspect, amplifies their power and allows them to go fast uphill, go fast downhill, and the goal behind all that is that the vehicle kind of disappears and everybody's out on the trail together riding mountain bikes regardless of, of physical ability. So the Horizon is the first to be purpose-built for that and to also um, be rideable uh, by quadriplegic riders and folks with MS or different neuromuscular diseases. Now what were the challenges that you faced in developing this product? There have been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big project. We have been producing these since uh, a road version of the, of the Horizon, which is our road version is called the Alpha. We've been producing that since 2009. Um, so the early years it was you know just iteration after iteration improving that. Um, but with the opportunity through the Kickstarter campaign to um, kind of step back and say, okay, let's totally blank slate this, let's clear the chalkboard and start with the vision of what do we think is the best possible ideal scenario of coming out of this and then build from there. So removing assumptions um, and removing um, 
things that we had previously been using in our in our other models that we had been selling, um, and just going back to the drawing board, um, and then baking the cake up from there. And uh, it's it's a pretty complex cake. Yeah. <laughs> so, and an awesome cake. Yeah. It's so um, tasty. And and we're thrilled about how how it's come out. It's it's yeah. a blast no, to ride. Great. It really is. You had a successful Kickstarter. Yeah. What do you feel helped you make that a success? I think the number one thing that made that was a success was that we went um, we went to our demographics that we thought would benefit from the horizon and we said here's where we are this is what we are capable of doing technology wise what do you guys want in this project and in this product and um, we listened and I think that was the number one key indicator of success for that campaign is we didn't come to them and say here's our finished product do you like it yes or no can we have your money if you like it we said here's what we can do Let's make it together, yeah. essentially. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, if you had one bit of advice to give entrepreneurs or inventors out there, what would it be? Yeah, I've, um, it's so hard to summarize down to that level of one, um, but I, I think one of the turning points for us was looking outside of ourselves. Uh, we are minimalists, Jesse and I are both idealists, and I think that makes good dreamers sometimes, um, but not necessarily a good team and definitely not a good group of advisors when you're minimalist like that. Um, so in 2013, when we kind of came to our own ends and we realized we can't pull this off on our own, and we, it was like humility slapped us in the face and it was like, okay, do we want to this ship to go down and sink or do we want to swallow our pride and ask people for some Dang help. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where that began. So I would say, yeah, team is one way that that plays out is focus on your team. It's, you know, you can be as smart as a, anything, but if you don't have a team, it's, it's very tough. And then make sure you've got advisors that have been in the ring, that have fought the battles that you've fought. You may think that you're doing something that's completely new, but there's really nothing new under the sun. Um, and uh, for guys that are sage and have been through a ton and time again, it's just foolish to not access that wisdom. Um, so advisors are huge and all tied into that is humility. It's something we always come back to. If you're not humble and you're not teachable, then you're just stagnating yourself. And as good as you are right now is pretty much what you're setting yourself up for in the future. Um, if you can be teachable, then there's really no limit to it. What an incredible product. I want to thank Jesse and Tommy for allowing me to come out and see the horizon. Please go and check out their website at OutriderUSA.com or you can see more by clicking the video link over here. If you want to see more videos on innovation and in STEM education, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to support Mr. Innovator Educator, check out our Patreon page. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time.